we are tired of having to have the same conversation with them over and over and over again. Pain, anger, and exhaustion. With no officers held directly accountable for Breonna Taylor's killing in Louisville, Kentucky, people say enough is enough. Tonight at 5, what they want that change to look like. Plus, a Clayton County man accused of going on a rampage, shooting three women and a child. How deputies tracked him down. And a woman who couldn't wait to be a mother dies of COVID-19 shortly after giving birth. Why her family hopes others will take her story to heart. Live from Atlanta, 11 Alive at 5 starts now. There is tension in cities all across the country tonight. People still feeling the weight of the decision not to charge the three Louisville officers directly with shooting and killing Breonna Taylor. Instead, former officer Brett Hankinson was indicted on lesser charges. People in Louisville gathering around Taylor's memorial once again tonight. Last night, we saw a movement re-energized as people marched for justice and accountability. In Louisville, marches at one point turned violent with two officers hurt in the shooting. The suspect now facing several charges for assault and endangering the crowd. Here in Atlanta, people marched for hours saying the justice system failed them once again. Still, there were people who were determined to keep making their voices heard. Right is right and wrong is wrong. At the end of the day, she lost her life and someone needs to be held accountable for it. We've been marching for a while and we've been demanding change and change has been slow. It's happened, but it's slow and I think our elected officials just don't understand how resolute we are. This is a new movement. It's a new generation. We won't give up. Protesters marched from Woodruff Park to police headquarters, eventually ending up at the state capitol. The Georgia State Patrol says it used tear gas to break up the crowd after some protesters attempted to climb on a SWAT vehicle. About half the people scattered, but later 11 protesters were arrested after police warned them not to block the street. They're charged with failure to disperse. Under an executive order from Governor Brian Kemp extended just this week, the National Guard is still in place to protect buildings in the city. The Brianna Taylor case felt particularly close to home for a Henry County family who says their grandfather was the victim of a no knock warrant when officers raided the wrong home. Body camera video shows deputies were confused about which house they were heading to, but only fully realized the mistake after bursting into the wrong home and handcuffing the 79 year old man. Caitlin Ross spoke with his grandchildren today about why the Brianna Taylor decision is particularly hard for them. Onre Norris's family says they're fighting for accountability in their own case. They're taking the deputies involved to appellate court after a lower court ruled those deputies had qualified immunity in their grandfather's case. They say they were heartbroken to learn the officers involved in Brianna Taylor's case would not be charged in her death. Some devastating news to hear those officers weren't going to be held responsible. Henri Norris's granddaughter says it's hard not to take the grand jury decision in the Breonna Taylor case personally. As a black woman, it's like we're not valued as um, whole humans. She sees a lot of similarities between what happened to her grandfather and what happened to Breonna Taylor. Both police entries stemmed from drug investigations. Brianna and Onri were both innocent, and neither one knew it was law enforcement who had entered their home. My grandfather was in his home watching, watching the news, and um, all of a sudden the police come in on him. Onri's grandson says the same standard that's applied to everyday citizens should be applied to police. If I break into your home, I'm going to go to jail for breaking and entering, for trespassing. And if I kill someone, I'm going to go to jail for murder. They want to see jail time for the deputies who came into their grandfather's home. And they wanted jail time for the officers who came into Breonna Taylor's. That's the only way it's going to stop. That is the only way it's going to stop. Until we start holding these officers accountable for their actions, it's going to continue to happen. She says they're grateful their grandfather wasn't killed when Henry County deputies broke down their door. The department has declined to comment, so have attorneys representing the deputies involved. Tired. The one word sums up how many protesters and activists in Atlanta describe feeling about the decision not to charge the officers directly in Breonna Taylor's death. 
While Taylor was killed by Louisville police, Atlanta protesters point to police shootings in our own city that are still unresolved. Cases like Kane Rogers, who was shot by Atlanta police officer James Burns in 2016 while in a car. An internal investigation found no evidence that Rogers was involved in the reported break in Burns was investigating when he opened fire on it. Burns was fired and charged with murder, but the case still has not gone to trial four years later. And Dietrich Griffin, who was killed by an Atlanta police officer in 2019 after GBI says he tried to steal an unmarked police car from a gas station. His family says Griffin was unarmed and was shot as he was driving away from the officer. Officer. Their attorney says APD initially reached out about a settlement, then stopped responding. And DeAndre Phillips, who was shot and killed as he sat in a car near the police annex building in 2017. Police initially said officers were investigating the smell of marijuana coming from the car, and one of the officers was being dragged by Phillips' car when the officer shot him. But the family says surveillance video does not show that. The DA told us earlier this year he wants to bring the case before a grand jury, but so far, the officers have not been cleared or charged in the case. So when we talk to protesters, it's not just Breonna Taylor's case that's causing their frustration. It is the weight of all these cases that we as black women have reported over the years and so many other cases that are not resolved. So here's how two women at Atlanta's demonstration last night described it in their own words. took me back to like my junior year self in high school where we got the verdict about the George Zimmerman case. So I cried a little, you know, but I understood that there's still work to be done. So that's what I mean. It definitely does hit um, different. I was extremely sad to see the verdict, um, considering especially how long it took to finally hear anything from the government up there. But um, it wasn't a surprise at all because that's how we've been treated repeatedly through history. We don't get it! So I think that protesting is just a tool in a toolbox of change as well as voting. So if you go and put them hand to hand, hand, hand in hand, then it's you're going from the, the protest to the polls. Mm -hmm. So doing both of that, that, that's you being able to hit them in the streets so that they're hearing your voice. But then also you're letting them know that my voice doesn't just matter when I'm in the streets. It matters on the, on the ballot as well. Training, training, training for police officers. I don't think six months is adequate to learn a position like that. Yeah, I think you just got to see the facts and understand the facts that go with it and understand right is right, wrong is wrong, regardless of whether or not you agree with it. The toll is especially heavy on black women in particular, many of whom say this has them questioning if they can even be safe inside their own homes. Therapist Adrian Slaughter spoke to us about the trauma people are feeling today which comes not just from the Breonna Taylor case, but from seeing parents and grandparents oppressed over the years. She says the trauma can manifest itself as insomnia, feeling numb or exhausted and even depression. And it's very important to not only seek help, but to choose a provider who understands where you are coming from culturally. What is that cultural impact on me day to day when I have microaggressions when I come in? Um, I have to wear my hair a certain way. I have to send my black son to school. My black, black daughter is being harassed. These are constant pressures that unfortunately the dominant culture here in America just do not experience. A rallying call here in all of this, things need to change. 11 Alive's Joe Hankey spent the day talking to activists about the specific measures they want to see. After months of protests and saying Breonna Taylor's name countless times, activists say on Wednesday they did not receive justice. Because Britt Jones Chukara is an Atlanta-based activist who organizes local protests. I was actually extremely shocked. I actually wanted to have hope. We see very clearly that America is just incapable of giving black people the justice that we deserve. And Tamika Mallory is a national activist and co-founder of the organization Until Freedom. Both say the moment is now to push for noticeable changes towards racial equality and justice. 
Congressman John Lewis, if he could go from not voting and Jim Crow laws to then, you know, seeing the first black president, those are huge hills that he had to climb. And I just keep that same strength with me. Jones Chukaro says changes begin with the police officers on the streets. We need officers to get more involved with their communities so they can learn their communities and they can actually care about their communities. In Washington, she says three bills currently in Congress could bring noticeable change. The Police Accountability Act, Grand Jury Reform Act, and Cooling Off Period Elimination Act. The bills would overhaul police departments and training, create systems for tracking use of force incidents, require the appointment of a special prosecutor in cases of law enforcement officers killing someone, and allow the DOJ to bring charges in such cases if states don't. A ban on no-knock warrants is also included there. Mallory says following Taylor's death, Louisville banned no-knock warrants, and she is supporting efforts now to do so across Kentucky and nationwide. She's also pushing for the defunding or redirecting of funds from police to other community needs. Applying it to mental health, applying it to, to jobs in the community, making sure that people have proper housing and proper education. Um, and that's what we want to see happen. And both women tell me recent events have only increased the stakes for the upcoming November 3rd election. So that is why they're pushing for changes through laws, but are also saying everyone needs to register to vote and then make a plan for how they will early vote or vote on election day.